in the grand theater of human action, where the sinews of society are stretched between the poles of instinct and reason, there is a singular performance that bears closer scrutiny, the act of voting. The minds of Lysander Spooner, Carl Watner, and Larkin Rose, each a beacon in the fog of conventional thought, have offered us the script to this play, and in it they expose the moral and practical futility of electoral politics. Spooner, ever the legalist-turned-philosopher, argued that the social contract is a myth, a fabrication designed to bind the unwitting masses to the will of the few. The act of voting, he contended, is akin to casting one's lot in a rigged game, a game where the players are misled into believing they have a hand in shaping their fate. But in truth, their choices are as predetermined as the orbit of the moon, bound by forces beyond their control. The voter, in Spooner's eyes, becomes an unwitting accomplice to the very tyranny they seek to dismantle. Carl Watner, with his keen sense of historical irony, traced the roots of this deception to the very foundations of the state. He viewed the electoral process not as a path to freedom, but as a tool of coercion, a velvet glove that conceals the iron fist of authority. By participating in this process, Watner argued, the individual legitimizes the power of the state, lending it a veneer of consent. This is the moral trap. By voting, one affirms the right of the majority to impose its will upon the minority, thus perpetuating the cycle of violence and oppression that defines the state's existence. Larkin Rose, the fiery iconoclast, distilled these arguments into a call for action, or rather, inaction. To him, the very notion of voting is an act of submission, a tacit admission that one's freedom is contingent upon the whims of the majority. In Rose's view, the ballot box is not a tool of liberation, but a symbol of bondage. True freedom, he argued, can only be found in the rejection of the system itself, in the refusal to grant it the moral authority it so desperately seeks. Thus, in the grand choreography of human affairs, the act of voting is revealed as a hollow gesture, a ritualistic dance that distracts from the deeper truth. It is not the ballot that shapes our destiny, but the courage to stand apart from the crowd, to reject the false promises of power, and to forge a path of true independence.